everyone today we have come to the last session of the course global trade and commerce and i'm going to tell you all about the future of the world economy and try to conclude what we have uh, done so far now what has what's going to happen to the world economy now that we are going through this crisis the post pandemic crisis what's going to happen to the world economy in fact the whole economy has come to a standstill the global economy has come to a standstill because of uh, the uh, pandemic uh, there has been a shutdown globally most countries were in a lockdown for a very long period of time you know china is out of it now most of the european countries are also trying to open up but still we have paid a heavy price and we are still facing the consequences of this uh, crisis now keeping the society in a lockdown comes at a very very high cost we have to ensure that the people have not only income but they also have the uh, you know proper health support that is needed to go through this crisis so economically vulnerable groups are very very much at risk because of the crisis and it won't be easy to come out of this crisis of course the world economy has the experience the economic history of human uh, thought tells us about the crisis that the economy the world that the world economy has gone through in 1980 that 1918 that is during the first world war in 1929 in 1945 and the second world war ended and also in 2008 the global financial crisis when uh, with the collapse of the lehman brothers in in the united states so we know we have been through several crises the 1929 uh, great depression is one of them so the global economy does have an idea how to deal with these sorts of crises but still given the nature and the magnitude and the scale of this crisis it is becoming very difficult for governments to deal with this crisis rich countries have more resources uh, you know uh, to deal with the crisis mm -hmm. however poor countries have little resources and they find it very hard to go through this crisis they have to undertake very tough economic measures and they have to ensure their fiscal health to be able to overcome this crisis and also many poor countries are likely to get into further the debt because of uh, this crisis so the future of the world economy post pandemic is likely to be really very bleak and many jobs and employment the future of jobs and employment as you all know is at risk many many millions of people have lost their jobs the covid-19 crisis is expected to wipe out 6.7% of the global us globally in the second quarter of 2020 equivalent to 195 million full time workers are expected to lose their jobs so this magnitude of this crisis is huge in terms of job loss and in unemployment uh, the effect on working hours has been humongous there have been large scale reductions in jobs in the united arab emirates in europe in asia and also the entire asia pacific region nearly 125 million workers have you know kind of lost their jobs or are working less because of this crisis in the asia pacific regions and the sectors that have been affected the most include accommodation food services tourism manufacturing retail and the food business and administrative activities have been affected because of the crisis worldwide 2 billion people work in the informal sector and this has been the worst hit including india large part of the workforce is in the unorganized sector and these migrant workers and these informal workers have been the most hard hit by the crisis so the future of jobs and employment according to the crisis is going to be very weak as i said there are many many worst affected areas um the the impact of the crisis on world economy is huge on indian economy it is also huge supply chains have been disrupted unemployment rates have gone up and despite the implementation of unprecedented fiscal stimulus packages announced by several countries according uh, across the globe interest rates having dropped to zero the pandemic is still affecting many countries so it's a worst uh, form of uh, uh the crisis that most global economies are going through right now now if you look at analyze try to analyze the impact of covid-19 and the impact on various sectors the impact on trade is very huge for instance the impact on indian trade is is considered to be around 348 million dollars now the country indian india figures among the top 15 economies in the world um who are affected by the manufacturing slowdown in china according to Uh, the UN report 
This is how the Confederation of the Indian Industry says that the impact of the coronavirus has been the maximum on auto industry, pharmaceuticals, chemicals, electronics, tourism and aviation and textile sector. These are some of the sectors that have been worst hit by the crisis. Now let us go one by one. What is wrong with the auto industry? The, the shutdown has badly affected the automobile industry in India which is largely dependent on various forms of imports of auto components from the Chinese market and therefore because of the lockdown in China uh, there is expected to be a slowdown of 8 to 10 percent in the Indian manufacturing uh, automobile industry. China is a dominant in the battery supply chain and it accounts for nearly three quarters of the battery manufacturing capacity and therefore imports from China are not coming in therefore the Indian automobile industry has been worst affected. Similarly is the case with the pharmaceuticals. Though India is one of the top formulators of drug exporters in the world, a large uh, a chunk of bulk drugs come from China. India is importing a lot of bulk drugs from China and as a result of the lockdown and as a result of the crisis in China, uh, the, the export of pharmaceuticals to the world has been affected. India imports nearly 24,900 crores a worth of bulk drugs in financial year 2019 accounting for nearly 40 percent of the overall domestic consumption. So this is one sector which has been affected. Chemicals, a lot of uh, local dye stuff uh, units in India are heavily dependent on imports of several raw materials including chemicals and intermediaries from China. So nearly 20 percent of the production loss has taken place. And therefore, a lot of dye stuff industries, especially in and around Gujarat, have been badly affected by the pandemic. Similar is the case with the electronic industry. A lot of raw materials used in the electronic industry also come from China and other parts of the world. And there has been a severe impact on the electronic industry. Um, the sales of top electronic companies and, smart, and smartphone makers has come down drastically. As we all know, because of uh, the crisis, all of us have stopped traveling. Uh, the domestic and international aviation has come to a standstill. Uh, the, all the tourist places, the religious places and the revenue generating activities have completely stopped. And most of the flights have been suspended, though they have started uh, now. Recently, they have been resumed in India and, and some uh, parts of the globe. But still, international travel is very restricted. It's one of the most revenue generating sectors, not only in India, but across the globe and therefore we see that tourism and aviation has been badly hit. Similarly, another sector which has been badly hit is the textile sector. This is also there has been a 50 percent uh, decrease in the textile exports of fabric, yarn and other raw materials from India has been badly affected and the impact of the coronavirus on textiles industry has been huge. So in sum, if you look at the overall situation, the developing countries have, have to contend uh, with international investors withdrawing from their countries. Uh, the remittances from migrant workers has come down drastically. Most uh, LDCs have experienced decline in export earnings, commodity prices across the globe have come down, oil prices have come down, especially the cost of transport fuels has come down affecting many economies in the world. So what is the way forward for the post the pandemic? Both globalization and anti-globalization pressures will continue to exist um, in the business environment. Um, growth has growth is going to come down uh, by nearly 13 to 22 percent. Um, there is going to be a 30 to 40 percent reduction in foreign direct investment and about 40 to 80 percent reduction in the international airline passengers in 2020. So the UN uh, organizations, all the multilateral organizations have called for a very very um, a coordinated response to this crisis at the global level. Um, a, a lot of financial and economic help is needed by the countries which most countries have to come together and give to each other and we have to put the economy, uh, global economy back on uh, the track of uh, sustainable development. This is what the UN is saying and hopefully in a few months time uh, things will begin to normalize and the global economy will come back on track. Thank you.